With firmware 3.5, I now have the DSP to more accurately model what I consider the golden era of draft tones. This is Vintage Draft 2.0, an update to my draft pack. Yeah, daddy's on, daddy was on the way. Eat apple. Eat apple, yeah, to pass the time, right? Apparently I was too slow. Uh, yeah, apple. Uh-huh. Don't cry. Okay, yeah, <laughs> eat apple, don't cry. Not to make excuses, but if you're going to adopt a true block-by-block -block recreation of Draft's pedal boards on the Helix, you're going to need a lot of patches and you won't be able to 100% accurately replicate some specialty effects. He goes through so much gear. As I mentioned in the first Vintage Draft video, you have two approaches to tone crafting. A literal approach like the one I just described going for 100% accuracy block-by-block. -block or a dynamic approach which approximates the tone using various tools that achieve a similar feel and response. And rather than going with 100 patches for the 100 different rigs, I thought I'll try to capture the essence of Vintage Draft with three core aspects of its tone. The amps, the preamp, and the overdrives. Number one, the amp section. Firmware 3.5 frees up enough DSP to have a stereo amp setup, and I've chosen to attempt a tonal recreation of Drops Vox AC30 and Mesa Boogie Nomad 55. Since there's no equivalent on the Helix, I've gone with a dynamic approach using the Kelly Texas Channel 1 paired with a 2x12 inch male C12Q cab to emulate the high, clean headroom from this amp. As far as microphones go, I went with the R121 on the Bluebell for that scoot mid-range crunch when overdriven and the SM57 on the C12Q for a focused low end that doesn't build up excessively. And that's what I think sets aside Drop's old tones, the blending of a gritty Class A Vox style amp with a clean Class AB 6L6 amp. When hit with overdrive pedals, you can hear the chime from the Vox style amp but with the clarity and definition from the 6L6 style amp. Take note of this parallel processing of grit versus clean because that's also going to play into how we'll dial in the overdrives. Number 2, the preamp section. I've made this patch versatile to be used across the 2010s era of draft tone with the inclusion of a preamp section. Since the no other name to her, draft has been using boost pedals as a preamp to push the signal through its pedal board. At one point, there was the RC booster, which has since evolved into the Jackson Audio Prism. We don't have a prism on the Helix, but we do have an EP booster style that to my ears does a good job at recreating the magic dust elements of using the pedal in front of the amps. On a patch, I've dialed in just enough push to enliven the amps and saturate the dry pedals with musically pleasant grit. The boost and bright switches will help tailor the sound for humbucker or single coil guitars. As a starting point, I recommend turning the boost off and the bright on for humbuckers. Reverse this for single coils, boost on and bright off if you're using a Strat or a Filtertron equipped guitar. Of course, every guitar is going to be different, so experiment with the combination of switches.
Number 3, the drive section. As I was able to have the amps and the cabs on path 2, that left me with full routing flexibility of effects on path 1. Remember that parallel processing of grid and clean in the amps? I think that the defining sound of old draft tone is that magical blend of overdrive, clean. It seemed like however thick drafts overdrives were, there was still picking definition and articulation. I think I found a way of emulating this, using a split AB path to blend a Minotaur overdrive in path A with other drives in path B. The Minotaur on the Helix is supposed to be a clone centaur, with the gain control acting like a blend knob between a distorted signal and a clean boost. This is also how the clean blend in the sparkle drive functions, which I think was integral to Drop's older pedal boards. The sparkle drive sound on this patch is achieved by blending the Minotaur in path A and the tube screamer sound in path B. The Xpandora sound on this patch is blending a cleaner Minotaur in path A and a Proco Rat distortion sound in path B. I'm happy with the results I'm getting and I hope this gives you fresh ideas as to how to dial in those older Hillsong tones. If you're enjoying the way this patch sounds, I've included it as an update to my draft pack on my Buy Me A Coffee page. It's Sunday ready with some classic Hillsong sections dialed in just for those hits of nostalgia. But as a bonus for those of us who need extra versatility to play a variety of songs in a set, I've included other effects that aren't locked in the period of vintage draft, mainly the ambient stuff that we all need to have on hand.
Do I can press number 5 again? Press it. Okay, thank you. Okay, no, stop, stop, stop. Ah, yeah. Okay, can I do it? Okay, can I try? <laughs> okay, slow, okay, slow. <laughs> okay, sure. Okay, <laughs> try, try. You play, play. Aya! Play, I need to play at the same time as you. Try again, try again. Try again. Those of you who've downloaded the pack before, please check your folder links for a free update. Question of the day, which era of drop tone is your personal favorite? Comment below with the album name and feel free to share your story as to why it's your favorite. For me, it's Blessed, as it was the year that coincided with my guitar ability taking off, as well as my deepening involvement with youth worship ministry. 14 year old me made a commitment to be as skillful as Drop was on the guitar. I love to hear your stories, ideas, and thoughts in the comment section below. That's it from me. Thanks for watching this video. Here on my channel, I'm committed to helping you get the best tone out of your gear, as well as playing your best for the Sunday service. If you're a worship musician on the same journey, consider liking, subscribing, hitting that bell icon, and sharing this video with someone whom you know could benefit. This video is part of my tonal recreation series, where I attempt to recreate the tones I hear on the recordings and have fun while doing it. Check out the playlist where I have my original vintage drop video, as well as tackling David Hislop's tones which have a different type of complexity. See you there. Until next time, I'm Justin, and I'm all about worship guitar.